They obviously thought we'd like a jet fighter for the road. But would we? I mean, really? Well, to find out, I've got this jet fighter trainer, if we're honest. And I'm going to use it to have a race around our track against Jeremy in the Saab Saloon. Only James would turn up to do this in what I believe is the slowest jet ever made. Low pressure cock. High pressure cock. Spooling up. Jet building up its 1,750 thrusts. I'm ready with my 250 horses. Go! Yes! It's a fine start from the saloon car. And the Saab has stolen an early lead, but let's see. <laughs> now, there are a few things counting against me here. One is this aeroplane does have a top speed of around 400 miles an hour, but if we go any faster than about 100 on the deck, we'll take off, which means we'll be disqualified. Obviously, for dogfighting over North Vietnam or intercepting an incoming squadron of Russian fighters, you need a jet fighter. You really do. A car like this wouldn't really cut it. It would be useless. But down here, on the ground, it's the other way around. Uh, cornering is also an issue. Have to go quite slowly, otherwise we could pull a tyre off or maybe scrape a wingtip tank, spilling fuel, and then dying in a great fireball. I couldn't loop the loop in this car, that's true. But then James couldn't park that jet in a supermarket car park. Tony left for Chicago. Have to thread it very carefully between the tyres. Where the hell's Jeremy? There he is, woohoo! So, when they say something is a jet fighter for the road, what they mean is it's slow and ungainly and hard to steer and really not very good. And here we come to the hammerhead where we're going to have to uh, brake very hard indeed. So, Saab, bonkers advertising, chequered history, and lots and lots of harebrained ideas.